Model steam engines top tip time, part 78. Frequently I receive questions from viewers asking questions about soft soldering and silver soldering, so I thought I would combine them into the video you're about to watch. I explain the process in a very practical manner. The first section covers soft soldering and making a condenser. I'm using some Fryerlux solder paint. This is really good stuff, a little bit expensive but incredibly useful. This is proper solder and flux in one mixture. And I put plenty of it on and you notice that I put it about a quarter of an inch up the tube because once I position the tube vertically like this when the correct temperature is reached the solder will melt and run down towards the end plate and this will give a really good joint. So that's one end done, now for the other end. You will notice the use of a paintbrush. I dip this in some water and wipe round the end with it and what this does is just cleans up the end and evens out the solder. This is a bristle paintbrush, don't use a plastic one for obvious reasons. As the main part of this condenser was soft soldered together it doesn't need to go in the acid bath. I only reserve the acid bath for special occasions. I initially cleaned up this part using my polishing spindle and now I'm using some metal polish to clean it up. As I mentioned earlier these castings were not the best I've ever seen and there were quite a few little lumpy bits on them so here using a cutting disc I'm removing them and I'm removing them very carefully so as not to do any damage to the main part of the casting. I don't know how these unsightly lumps get to be on the castings in the first place but I don't know anything about foundry work so I'm not really qualified to comment. Now it's time to separate the two half brasses and get ready to solder the pieces of phosphor bronze into position. Some people may be thinking well why don't I just make a couple more big end brasses. The reason for doing it this way is in a previous video or two I've shown how to make big end brasses. So I'm not going to show it again, this is an alternative method and it's fairly quick and if you think about it, it's a good idea. Because once these brasses get worn beyond economical repair, I can just repeat this process and make new shells for them. Very similar I suppose to big end shells in a car engine but obviously much much smaller and it's more fun making them this way. As you've just watched I've coated the brasses using some Fryerlux paint. What I didn't show was I've also added some ordinary flux so this will be a really good soldered joint. And don't forget this is soft soldering not silver soldering so the parts do not need to be quite as hot. Just hot enough to melt the solder in fact. Both of these pieces of phosphor bronze are very well soldered into the gunmetal brasses. I'll clean them up later. Whenever you solder parts together, whether it be silver soldering or soft soldering, absolute cleanliness of the parts is vital and it's also quite important to use this stuff. This is flux soldering paste. It's the kind of stuff you buy from a DIY store and once this is applied to the work and heated up it cleans the metal. I'm applying plenty of this because I do not want any areas where there isn't any flux. I'm going to use plumber's solder to solder these components onto this metal plate. And unlike electrical solder, plumber's solder does not contain any flux built in. I can't really show much of the soldering process because it all takes place down inside the tubes and I really don't want to melt my new camera. The good thing is, because these are going to be painted, it doesn't matter if I get some solder on the brass base. If I was going to polish up this base, like on some condensers that I make, then I'd have to be very careful. But in this case it really is not important because I'll be sanding off most of the solder that's on the base as I key it for the paint. You will notice that in this clip I'm using the paintbrush a lot because I need to remove the excess solder from around the base of the tubes. I just dip the brush in some water and brush away the excess solder. The component that I soldered earlier has cooled and so it's on the bench and it's time to give it a really good scouring. First of all with emery cloth I need to scratch the brass as much as possible. But then once I've scratched the brass as much as possible, I need to smooth out some of the scratches and make finer scratches using Scotch-Brite. And just in case you've never seen any of my other videos, Scotch-Brite is an abrasive pad, a bit like a scouring pad, but a bit more vicious. I'll put the spelling on screen so you can get some for yourself. 
I use this stuff very frequently in my workshop for cleaning up metal parts as you see here and also getting a good finish on machine parts. But don't just take my word for it, try it for yourself. I found a lump of scrap brass in my scrap bin which supports the chimney and I'm spraying the parts using some etch primer. The etch primer I'm using is Precision Paints etch primer. I really do like this stuff and best of all, it works. Provided you follow the instructions, you must be able to see the metal through the paint and if you look carefully, you can see the metal through the paint. This means that the etch primer gets plenty of oxygen to do its job. Or at least I assume that's what the reason is. There are distinct differences between silver soldering and soft soldering, but parts of the process are identical. For instance, in this clip I'm deburring the end of the pipes so that the coned unions fit on the end of the pipe. I've cleaned up the pipework thoroughly using a piece of Scotch Brite, and in case you don't know, Scotch Brite is an abrasive scouring pad. Here you see me applying the silver solder flux to the pipe. The flux that I'm using in this clip is called Easy Flow Number 2, and this is still available. But the original solder that I'm using in this video is no longer available. It was known as Easy Flow Number 2 Silver Solder and contained cadmium, and it used to flow really well, but it was found to be dangerous. So now we generally use silver solder that doesn't contain cadmium. I always buy my silver solder from Blackgates Engineering, but be warned, it is not cheap. And here is a silver soldering application. I'm heating the entire part to a dull red heat. And when it's at the correct temperature and you apply the silver solder, this is what happens. The solder flashes all around the joint due to capillary action. You must never confuse silver solder with soft solder. Soft soldering is a low temperature process. It uses an entirely different flux. And silver soldering is a high temperature process where the work needs to be heated to at least dull red heat. Because of the lighting for the video, the dull red heat is not showing up very clearly. But take my word for it, if you do not apply enough heat, all you will get is a blob of silver solder on one side of the pipe. When I made this video, I had to silver solder a few pieces of pipe. So it allowed me to repeat the process and show one or two common problems. The most common problem is not having enough heat from the blowtorch to get the components to the right temperature. As you can see from this clip I don't have that problem, my blowtorch is substantial. The second problem you can see is here I'm applying too much silver solder which runs down the pipe. Silver solder flux is a white powder and you mix it with water to the consistency of single cream. Then you apply it to the pipe and fit the union cone and once you start to heat up the part, you will notice that suddenly the flux takes on a watery appearance. That is the time to apply the silver solder. But don't forget that the silver solder will bond to the metal wherever there is molten flux. The propane gas blowtorch that I use is a sievert blowtorch, the spelling is on screen, and it has interchangeable blowtorch heads. This is the one that I use most of the time and it's ideal for general purpose soldering jobs. I bought my gas blowtorch system in the early 1980s and it's just as good today as it was then, although maybe not quite as shiny. Try and avoid the cheap ones that you buy at supermarkets, they're not very good. Yes, these sievert systems are quite expensive, but you get what you pay for. You will notice that after the soldering has been completed, the pipes are very discoloured and there's a lot of oxidisation around the joint. You need to get rid of this. More about that at the end of the video. The next silver soldering operation is different. I'm making a rudder for a large model boat. The silver soldering operation though is identical. The only difference being is that you have to line up the parts accurately before you start. Because once you start the silver soldering process, if they move around, then things are going to be in the wrong position. I thoroughly clean the parts and you just see me apply the flux to the rudder blade. The rudder shaft and the blade assemblies are supported by a piece of fire grate. This is stainless steel fire grate from Blackgates Engineering and it's ideal for holding parts like this. For this demonstration I'm not really doing the job properly. I'm applying the silver solder before the work is hot enough and as you can see 
It just sits like a blob of silver solder on the work until you get the work hot enough and then it flows. It's a better idea to get the work hot enough in the first place before you apply the silver solder. By the way, as this is a demonstration, I've applied far too much silver solder to this. If you heat the part up to the correct temperature evenly and throughout, then a small amount of silver solder will flash down the joint. For the purpose of this tutorial video, it's good to show quite a lot being applied so you can see the principle clearly. Once you've finished the silver soldering, it's really important to let the parts cool to black before quenching them in water. And once the parts are cool enough to handle, you can put them in the acid bath. Sulfuric acid is best, but I use some stuff called Kilrock K, which is formic acid based and it's kettle descaler. The body parts are an optional extra and play no part in the cleaning of the metal. I hope that this video compilation answers a lot of your questions. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch, and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.